Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. Welcome brothers and sisters. We are in part 55 of Sheikh Al-Tamiz Tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah in the English language. A couple of things. This will be a short one because of the way that the lectures are divided in the Arabic language in terms of the audio files. Another thing I want to mention is that the link I have in the first page here, uh, normally I have a link to the actual audio. Uh, what happened is that, uh, subhanAllah, between this class and the one before, uh, Sheikh al means uh, website, they've, they've revamped it a little bit. So to, to get the exact links is a little bit difficult, but you can always go on the link on the website that I have at the bottom, and you can also uh, have a look in there and just go to the Tafsir al-Quran, and you'll see that all the classes are there, inshallah, uh, in the same numbering sequence. Now, verse 219 يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر قل فيهما إثم كبير ومنافع للناس وإثمهما أكبر من نفعهما ويسألونك ماذا يفقون قل العفو كذلك يبين الله لكم الآيات اللي عليكم تفكرون So this verse is about the wine and the gambling and we are reviewing it شيخ, شيخ, The Sheikh began by saying قل العفو أي ما زاد عن حاجتكم أو أما ما كان داخلا في الحاجة فلا تنفقوه لأن الإنسان يبدأ بنفسه ثم بمن يعول The answer in the verse is that one is to spend what is over and above his needs. And as for what he requires for his needs, he does not spend that on others because one begins with himself and then those who are under uh, his responsibility. And it goes against proper wisdom that one spends on strangers while his family is, is hungry. Some people think that spending on themselves and their families does not bring reward from Allah, that it is not sadaqa. However, this is due to ignorance of the fact that one spending on himself and his family is in fact sadaqa. And in the, in the hadith, you can always find references to that. Based on this, Spending on one's relatives is of more priority than spending on strangers because they're closer to being his family, to his immediate family. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say the excess beyond needs, thus Allah makes clear to you the verses of revelation that you might give thought. And so here, كَذَلِكَ means that Allah is clarifying here regarding spending just as he made it clear regarding Khamr and Maisra before. Uh, so that part of it, the word ذَلِك, before the kaf, a demonstrative pronoun, ismul ishara in Arabic we call it, points to what came before regarding the ruling of Khamr and Maisir. Now one may wonder as to how it is a bayan, because Allah says yubayin, right? A clarification regarding Khamr and Maisir, even though Allah did not give details as to the benefits and sin of Khamr and Maisir, because he mentions that there's many benefits, but there's a great sin. Uh, the answer is that Allah said that the sin is great and a lot. And this is a clarification so the more one drinks khamr, the more sin he incurs with the punishment due on that. Allah also mentioned the benefits as a summary because there is no benefit in enlisting the benefits themselves of, of these two things, khamr and maysir. On the other hand, uh, listing the benefits may tempt people to actually consume and engage in such. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and qul afwa is also clear because it means that one spends that, that what is over and above his needs. كذلك يبين لكم الآيات يبين يعني يظهر يبينه يعني بينت بينته بينته فيتبين فتبين يعني ظهر in Arabic so the word يبين means to make something clear or apparent for example in verse 187 of Surah Al-Baqarah we have we we already saw this verse before حتى يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct to you from the black thread of night so here it means to appear. So here, in our verse that we're talking about here, يبين لكم الله الآيات أي يظهرها حتى تكون واضحة جلية. It means that Allah manifests the verses such that they become like clear, absolutely clear. الآيات, the word الآيات, جمع آية. The word آيات is the plural of آية. And there are two types. There are, there are uh, two types of آيات. There's legislative and universal. So we have al-ayat al sharia the legislative signs, they have been clarified in a detailed way due to our need to worship him properly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But al-ayat al kawniyya the universal signs, have been clarified in a general way. We are in need of how to worship Allah, to know how to do it, uh, both in general and in detail, ijmalan wa tafsilan. Abu Dhar said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, uh, um, you know, he passed away, he didn't pass away, except that he gave details about any bird that flops its wings in the sky. يعني قال أبو ذر رضي الله عنه لقد توفي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وما طائر يقلب جناحيه في السماء إلا ذكر لنا منه علما. Uh, and there's also uh, another narration عن سلمان uh, قال قيل له قد علمكم نبيكم صلى الله عليه وسلم كل شيء حتى القراءة قال فقال أجل لقد نهانا أن نستقبل القبلة لغائط أو بول أو أن نستنجي أو أن نستنجي 
باليمين أو أن نستنجي بأقل من ثلاثة أحجار أو أن نستنجي برجيع أو بعظم So Salman al-Farisi reported that it was said to him Your Prophet has taught everything about even about ex- excrement? Yes. Yeah, he, say, he responded and says, Yes, he has forbidden us to face the Qibla at the time of excretion and urination or cleansing with the right, with the right hand and, or with less than three pebbles or with dung or bone. So every detail has been given. Therefore, the legislative verses are clarified in detail, but the universal verses, uh, details in their regard is regarding j- genre and type, not by individual things. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min ayatihi layla wa nahar, among his signs are night and day. And that's all he says, I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is general, but it is uh, for us, it is for us to investigate them. Also, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Woman ayati khalq as samawati wal ard. Among signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth. So again, these are general. Now, universal verses are summarized because there is no need for details, and it is also because those signs are perceivable. We, we can see them with our own eyes and touch them, so many of them. And thus, it is possible to investigate them further based on ability and what is attainable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ لَعَلَّ هَذِهِ لِلتَّعْلِيلُ وَاسْمُهَا الْكَافِ وخبرها, uh, وَخَبَرُهَا جُمْلَةُ تَتَفَكَّرُونَ The term لَعَلَّ is to show the reason or cause and, uh, and, and the letter kaf that comes after it, uh, letter kaf, uh, and it, it is, is its noun and its predicate, its khabar, is that you give thought. Giving thought here is in regarding this life and the next, which comes in the first part of the following verse, in verse 220, because if we continue reading after verse 218, or uh, 219, it goes into 120, that you may give thought to this world and the hereafter. Giving thought about this world is understood, but what about giving thought in the hereafter? Is it about giving thought during the hereafter? The answer is no. It means that thought is given to the matters of this life and the next life. Not that thought takes place about the hereafter during the time of the hereafter. Because it's too late to be to be, to be be giving thought about it. It's already here. And this shows that uh, Allah clarifies both legislative and universal verses. And that is because the majority of the verses to do with the hereafter are the legislative verses to do with reward and punishment for deeds. As for the verses or for verses on this world, they are more universal verses um, uh, in this regard. If one ponders, it would become clear. So uh, you have here, uh, Allah says the example of this worldly life is but like a rain, which we have sent down from the sky that the plants on the earth absorb. So it mixes due to the abundance of the rain. And Allah continues in the same verse and says, That the plants of the earth absorb, this is the water that's mixing with it, those from which men and livestock eat until when the earth takes on its adornment, meaning it becomes completely beautiful. And then Allah says, And it's beautified and its people suppose that they have capability over it. So they, So basically, all that remains is that the people would reap and, and use uh, its fruits. Allah then says, أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيدًا كَأَنْ لَمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ There comes to it our command by night or by day, and we make it as harvest as a harvest as if it had not uh, uh, flourished uh, yesterday. SubhanAllah. Um, so, and also in verse uh, uh, 20 of uh, Surah Al-Hadid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about this world again, this is, this is talking about it from a universal uh, ayat perspective again giving this the same kind of parable as what we just saw in the other verse know that this life or that the life of this world is but amusement and diversion and adornment and boasting of one another and competition and increase of wealth and children like the example of a rain whose resulting plant growth pleases the, the tillers. Uh, then it dries and you see it turned yellow. Then it becomes scattered debris. And in the hereafter is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And what is the world life except the enjoyment of delusion? So in this verse, the last part of it, uh, about the hereafter, but as for the hereafter, there is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. So this is talking about now, this part of the verse is more uh, legislative. It's more about al ahkam you know, it's more about shara'iyah, uh, about the shara'. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 2020, which is, we, we, we talked about the first part of it, fi dunya wal-akhirah, wa yis'unuk an yitama qul islahun lahum khayr. 
وأنتم خالطون في إخوانكم والله يعلم المفسد من المصلح ولو شاء الله لعنتكم إن الله عزيز حكيم to this world and the hereafter. This is continuing from the previous verse that you have thought about those two. And they ask you about orphans, say, improvement for them is best. And if you mix your affairs with theirs, they are your brothers. And Allah knows the corrupter from the amender. And if Allah had willed, he could have put you in difficulty. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. The questions come again, starting with the, the, the wow, uh, meaning and, uh, which is a coordinated conjunction, as if all of the questions are connected. The second question in the previous verse is regarding what to spend. And this is connected to the first question regarding Khamr and Maisir in the previous verse. Because spending on Khamr and Maisir is of no benefit. But spending on the others uh, comes with benefit. So it's all about spending. And this is how they're connected to each other. Now in this verse is a question about the orphans. Al-Yatama jam'u yatim wa huwa ladhi mata abuhu wa lam yablugh. Mushtaqun min al-yutm wa huwa al-infirad. The word yatama, yatama in Arabic is the plural of yatim. In the Arabic language, it is derived from yutm, to be alone or separated. It is one whose father has died before the, the, the son or daughter reached, uh, reached puberty, before the son or daughter uh, reached puberty. And due to this, the orphan requires more care, and that is why there are many verses regarding taking care of the orphans in the Noble Quran. And this verse was revealed due to two other verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا مَا الْيَتِينِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنَ And do not approach the orphan's property except in a way that is best until uh, he reaches maturity. We also have, uh, and, and this is this actually, this verse wasn't only in Surah Al-An'am, but it was also in Surah Al-Isra. But then there's another one in Surah Al-Nisa, actually, in verse 10, which is quite a dangerous one, uh, with, a, with, a, with a real strong threat. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ أَمْوَالَ يَتَامَ ظُلْمًا إِنَّمَا يَأْكُلُونَ فِي بُطُونِهِمْ نَارَ Indeed, those who devour the property of orphans unjustly are only consuming into their bellies fire, and they'll be burned in a, in a blaze. Allah. Now the companions were fearful from this, they, so they separated their food from the food of the orphans. As a precaution, they would cook the food of the orphans separately from theirs. So the food either ended up not being of high quality, or it was too much and became spoiled because the orphan can't finish all of it, right? And they won't, and they won't touch it. So this, uh, this became difficult on the companions, and they worried about mixing the food together. But Allah said in, in Surah Nisa, as we just read, uh, because He said uh, about those who consume the property of the orphans unjustly, that the outcome would be the consumption of fire. So they asked the Messenger وسلم, about this, and Allah answered them in an answer that is concise and, that, and of the highest levels of eloquence and clarity. He said, قُلْ إِصْلَاحٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ Say improvement for them is best. And here, Islah is that one would do for the orphans what is best for them in all matters, be it in raising them, regarding wealth and this applies by either bringing something or eliminating something because sometimes it's better to give and sometimes it's better to take something away that's hard that's harmful and the word khayr is unrestricted in that improvement is best in all matters khayr. it does not mean that improvement for them is better than corrupting it's an it's an it's an indefinite uh, use of the word khayr it is more vast than that it's not like saying uh, 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 يعني, it's better in the sense that oh um, the other way that do it is to is to corrupt their uh, you know their their wealth. No, khair is meaning good in all aspects. For example, is a verse in Surah uh, An Nisa actually. When imratun khafat min baaliha nushuzan aw iradan falajan alharih ma yusliha bainah masulha wa sulhu khair. And if a woman fears from her husband contempt or evasion, uh, there is no sin upon them if they make terms of settlement between them, and the settlement is best. It says your best. So khair here. Is unrestricted. It's not saying it's better than, uh, yani, than 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 not per, per se, not um, reconciling. The second sentence is in the in the verse we're discussing. And if you mix your affairs with theirs, they are your brothers. The first was قُلْ إِصْلَاحٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ Say improvement for them is best. So there are two things here. So the answer about the orphans is, is is given in two sentences. It means that if you mix your food and drink with theirs, then they are not strangers to you. They are your brothers. They are, they are brothers in faith or family relation or both. If your father, for example, died and you have a little and you have a little brother, then he's an orphan because he hasn't reached uh, puberty and uh, and is also is your and is your brother in faith and family relation. So he's got two things on you: he's your brother in faith and in terms of family. An orphan might be a cousin who is a Muslim, so it would be brotherhood in faith only, not your brother literally like your your blood brother from the same uh, parents. 
Or the orphan might be a blood brother who is not a Muslim, so brotherhood is in family relation here, not, not religion. And in general, brothers mixing uh, affairs with each other is something normal, not something that people will be uh, shying away from. So when one regards the orphans as brothers, then he will mix his affairs with theirs and what is in their interest. That is why Allah said, فَإِخْوَانُكُمْ And it is known that one will be compassionate to his brother. Notice how Allah began with islah, improvement, before al-mukhalata, the mixing of affairs. As if to say that if there is no improvement in the mixing of affairs, then it is better not to mix affairs. But if there is improvement in mixing affairs, then the orphans are our brothers and it is not possible that we would harm them. Therefore, it is permissible to mix one's affairs with those of the orphans. Because Allah says, and then Allah says, Wallahu ya'lamu al-mufsida muslih. And Allah knows the corrupter from the mender. Here, He did not say, Ya'lamu al-mufsida wal muslih, that He knows the corrupter and the mender. Here, the knowledge is regarding the distinction between the two. So He rewards each one of uh, each one with what He deserves. And the corruption here includes corruption in their uh, corrupting corruption uh, in the religion, uh, corrupting in the religion and the worldly and, and the worldly corruption as well. Uh, Allah knows Allah knows this. And here the corrupter and amender doesn't only include those who actually do this, but it even includes those who intended such. One may intend to corrupt, but he is held back, and one other another may want to amend, but he is also held back. Allah knows their intentions, the intentions of each, and will reward accordingly. So this is general. Corruptors and amenders in any and all matters, and that also includes the orphan specifically in this verse. Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَعَنَتَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ and if Allah had willed, He could have put you in difficulty. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. The word law here is shartiyah. It is conditional. And its condition is sha'allahu, that Allah willed. And the answer to the conditional sentence is la'anatakum. And the letter lam here in la'anatakum as an answer to the, is, is an answer to law in, uh, in, in la'anatakum. Uh, it's not mandatory, it is additional. Because this, if the sentence said "Wala sha Allahu anatakum" without the lam in Arabic, in Arabic that would be a sound sentence. But here the word "lam" is additional, um, and it seems like it's for emphasis. An example in which the letter "lam" is omitted is, for example, "Lo nasha ujannahu ujaja." If we willed, we could have made it bitter. Just talking about the, the water in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Most of the time, though, the letter "lam" is there in the answer to the "lo" to the "if." لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَعَنَذَكُمْ أَيْ لَشَقَّ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah would have made two matters more difficult regarding the orphan. So anatakum means to make it difficult on you. So two matters could have been more difficult. What are they? First, that their food and drink is to be separated. And the second is that one uh, would have to estimate how much food to make so as not to make any of it go to waste. This would be very difficult, but Allah, by His mercy, uh, 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 removed that. And the term لَعَنَذَكُمْ has something similar as well. We have another verse in Surah An-Nisa. ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشْيَ الْعَنَةَ مِنْكُمْ الْعَنَةَ This allowance is for him among you who fears sin. Right? So here, الْعَنَةَ means الْمَشَقَّةَ وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَعَنَتَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ And if Allah had willed, you could have put you in difficulty. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and wise. So this last part is to show the reason or the cause, or the ta'aleel as we say in Arabic. And this goes back to this verse, uh, regarding uh, orphans, and it can extend to others that came before regarding spending on uh, and, and khamr and maysa. Because all of these questions were connected by the coordinating conjunction, the, the letter wow. Allah's name, Al Aziz, here uh, in the last part of the verse, we have Al Aziz uh, is of three meanings Izzatu Qadr, wa Izzatu Qahr, wa Izzatu Mtina'. Izzatu Al Qadr, ay la yudanihi ahadun fi ulu shani. Might of competence, it means nobody is of his rank regarding his transcendence, no one is at his level. Izzatul Qahr, la yaglibu ahad, bal huwa al-ghalib. Might of overpowering or overpowerment, it means that nobody overcomes him, rather he is the subduer. And we have Izzatul Imtina'ah, might of prevention. Ay yamtani'u alayhi ay kulla naqsun wa'ayb, fa huwa azizun la ya'tarihi al-naqs, azizun la ya'tarihi al-dhul. Might of prevention, it is negated from him to have any deficiency or fault. He is not humbled, he cannot be harmed. As for his name, Al-Hakim, al Hakim, it is derived from Al-Hukum, which is legislation or ruling, and also Al-Hikmah, wisdom. And Al-Hukum itself is of two types, just like we had with the other one. Al -al 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 Allah's name, Al-Aziz, um, had different meanings. Here we have two types of Al-Hukum as well. Universal, 
and legislative. يعني الحكمة, wisdom, uh, is, 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 is also of two types. So we have الحكم is of two types, universal and legislative. And we have الحكمة, wisdom is also of two types, uh, which is what we say, what we call غائية وصورية. Either it is the outcome, the غاية of something, or what is apparent of an immediate occurrence, as سورية, يعني as you see it. So there's wisdom in the outcome of something, and there's wisdom in what actually takes place before the outcome, the actual occurrence. So one can have four different things from the above. They can have four different combinations, right? Because you have two types of hukum, two types of hikmah. Hikmah fil, fil qadar, suratuhu wa ghayatuhu, wa hikmatun fil shara', suratuhu wa ghayatuhu. Wisdom and decree, what actually occurs and its resultant outcome. That's one of them. Wisdom and legislation, uh, what is actually legislated and the outcome of the legislation itself. So you have four different things. As for concluding the verse with the two names of Allah, it is because legislation or ruling is for him, Al Aziz Al Hakim. Uh, he had, had he willed, he would have he would have made things more difficult on us because he is Al Aziz and the authority belongs to him, Sultan. He is also Al Hakim, and so the hukum or the judgment belongs to him. He's the one that judges. He's the one, he's the one that decrees it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says about that, "Ala lahu al khalq wal amr." Unquestionably, he is the creator. His is the creation and the, and the command. And uh, we have in al hukm illa lillah. This is also a verse that we, we see, or part of the verse that we see in Surah Al-An'am and Surah to Yusuf. But despite Allah being Aziz and Hakim, He is also Afun, afun Rahim. He is, he is kind to slaves and thus made this matter and others easier. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma haraj. He has not placed upon you in the religion any difficulty. So the, the foundations of the religion are not difficult. Barakallahu fikum, subhanakallahu bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruk wa tubu